Welcome to another adventure growing oyster mushrooms. This time I grew pink oyster mushrooms too. The kits I used are from Back to the Roots and they're made as educational tools for children. You can see their website is targeted towards children and learning. Yeah, you can touch it. Yeah. Could you say pink oyster mushrooms? No. As you can see, children are fascinated by the look and feel of mushrooms, especially pink ones. Sometimes a coupon will pop up when you're looking at the website, so take advantage of that if it comes up. I also found the kits on Amazon for a little less. I'll leave the link in the description box below this video. The mushroom kits came pretty quickly. Inside the box was a marketing pamphlet for some educational gift items and two mushroom grow kits. Here is a pink oyster mushroom kit and of course it comes in a cute pink box. And here's the other mushroom kit I got. This just says organic mushroom grow kit. The mushroom kits are 100% guaranteed to grow and if you have a problem they give you both an email address and a phone number to get help. Inside the box is a discovery booklet, again geared towards school age children, to get them excited about learning to grow. You can see that the booklet contains instructions, both written and illustrated with pictures, to make it easy for kids to follow. It says to get started on day one, I will need to soak the bag overnight in water. There are some more detailed instructions on how to do that. I will need to remove the perforated panel on the front of the box first to create a sort of window and then cut X-shaped slits in the bag through the panel window. Once I do that I will remove the bag of medium from the box and soak it in water overnight. The kit also comes with a little spray bottle to mist the mushroom bag every day. Okay here is the bag of mushroom spawn or mycelium. It is not as white as the other blue oyster mushroom kit. It's a little on the brown side and I can see much of the substrate as though it hasn't been fully colonized. I'm wondering if this will be a problem. We'll see. Okay, step one, remove the kit's perforated panel and cut an X into the kit's substrate bag. Then, according to the instructions, scrape them awake and lightly scratch away some of the white layer with a fork. So I guess I'm right. It should look more white than it does. Then the next step is to remove the substrate bag from the box and soak it face down in a bowl of water overnight. The bag will float and don't worry if some of the substrate falls out. The next day, shake off the excess water from the bag and place it back into the box with the cut section facing the front panel. Mushrooms will grow best in a spot with indirect sunlight. Facing away from the window is perfect according to the instructions. It will take up to one week for the mushrooms to start growing. So I went ahead and cut out the front perforated panel. Then I put the bag back into the box, cut an X in the bag, then took the bag back out of the box. Next I peeled back the flaps and scratched the substrate with a fork. You can see that some of the substrate is still brown, not white. So I'm still wondering if the bag was fully colonized or does it need more time for the mycelium to spread out. I'm going to go ahead with this anyway. So once I scraped with the fork according to the directions, then I got a bowl of water and placed the bag with the cut side down in the water. It should stay there for 6 to 10 hours, which is basically overnight. And here's the other kit. So I'll do the same thing with this one. Cut out the perforated panel in the front. This says pearl oyster, so maybe that's what it is, pearl oyster, I guess. It has the same instructions, of course, so I'm going to cut an X into this also. And you can see that this bag is much whiter than the other bag. It looks like the mycelium is fully colonized. The pink oyster bag did not look to be as colonized as this one. Once I have the X cut into the bag, now I'll remove the bag from the box and peel back the flaps and scrape it with a fork just like I did before. This one feels a lot different than the other bag and the white stuff looks and feels a little like icing on a cake. 
and now it goes face down into the water to soak overnight. All right, it's the next day and both of the bags of mushrooms have been soaking overnight, so it's time to take them out, dry them off a bit, and put them back into their boxes. Again, you can see that the pink oyster bag does not have as much mycelium growing as the pearl mushroom bag. Here they are side by side in my grow area, and now we wait. Every day I give the mushrooms a spritz of water, and here it is day four, and you can see some pinning happening in quite a few areas of the pearl oyster mushrooms. And here is some pinning of the pink oyster mushrooms as well. And now it's the next day, day five, and you can see the mushroom kit on the left is producing nicely, but the one on the right is not doing as well. There is a little white fuzz growing on the side. I think this bag really wasn't quite ready yet. Maybe a few more days of misting will get it going. Now it's a couple of days later and the mushrooms on the left are coming out in full force. They look very similar to the blue oyster mushrooms that I grew last time, but they were not labeled as blue oyster mushrooms, so I'm not sure what they are. The pink oyster mushrooms on the right are still not producing much. And now it's just a day later and you can see the mushrooms on the left have really grown and spread out and even the pink mushrooms have grown a bit. This is called a flush, a crop of mushrooms, and this is the first flush. After harvesting the mushrooms you can usually get a second and even third flush, but they may be smaller than the first flush or crop of mushrooms. Okay, now we are at about a week after I started growing these and the mushrooms on the left are clearly ready to harvest. The pink ones are too, but they did not produce as nice a bunch. Here you can see some more of the white stuff, the mycelium growing, and it's spreading. I'm thinking of putting this bag away for a bit to let the mycelium colonize, and then maybe I'll have a better harvest. Okay, so these guys are ready to be harvested and cooked, and so I twist off the bunch and I'm going to need to clean it and then saute it with some onions and garlic. I'm going to put the box away to regrow again. These pink oysters have not lived up to expectations, but I'm not giving up on them just yet. I decided the pink oyster mushrooms may need a more humid environment, so I covered them with a plastic bag and made sure to mist them a little more often. And guess what? They started growing. The mycelium started spreading out more, and more baby mushrooms started appearing, and they kept growing. Still not the same results as the other box of mushrooms. I kept these under a plastic bag for a couple more days, and they started thriving. So I guess they just needed a more humid environment to get started. Remember, this bag was not as white as the other bag. You could see the substrate was not fully covered with the mycelium, so it needed more time to get colonized, and then it was ready to produce. And here you can see a nice pink flush of oyster mushrooms. Really very pretty. I think they're ready for harvest now. I learned a lot from this, and I would like to try regrowing these mushrooms for a second flush, and maybe try growing shiitake mushrooms next time. That should be interesting too. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you try growing mushrooms yourself. Thank you for watching. Bye!